Hey everyone, today's video is about the Shimanami Kaido. For those of you who are interested in riding the Shimanami Kaido, I have some information that probably really would help you before you go. What I'm going to talk about today is, you know, I have different information here as you can see. I went to the Shimanami Kaido back in November, so about three months ago. And the reason I went was it was kind of a, a test trip because I have three friends who are coming, two from Alaska and one from Sapporo, and they're a little bit older than I am. And I wanted to make sure could I'm kind of the guide. So at least I wanted to plan out a itinerary and know where to go and at least know, know what to expect so I took a trip first in November and what I found is that there was a lack of information especially in English you know they have their website in English and they have some things that are written in English but it's not really that good they have a lot of this kind of stuff here but you don't get any of this information until you get there there's no way to get it unless someone gave it to you or sent it to you when you get there you're already either leaving or you're leaving the next day you don't really have time to really figure it all out if you go off of the online information even though they have a you know a pretty good web page it looks good at least the shimami kaido they talk about rental shops and different places to go and things to do it's not really seamless and it's kind of random and it's hard to find really good information even after watching all the different youtube videos about people who are riding the shimanami kaido most of that is more vlogging right they're telling you oh this is great or we did this or this is tough but you want to know like detailed information about how to ride where to go ferry systems bus systems Systems, uh, different hotels different places to stay and so what I did was before I left I was going online I wasn't happy with the information so I went on to Amazon to check if there was anything and you know what came up the map called the Shimanami Toso map and so at that time it was two days before I was leaving I ordered it and it was gonna take like two weeks I think it was to come but anyway I decided I was gonna go a second time I'm gonna go again at the end of April that I thought that I'll just order it so I ordered it and when I went the first time I collected all this information that I could this comes from the bicycle rental rental shop you know and everybody has this one usually because they're from the rental shop the big rental shop in Onomichi or there's one in Imabari and this one they have the map but the map kind of goes horizontal but actually you're coming more vertical in the back they have some things to eat and some things to see this is very good but it's still very basic and very general so this is what most people have and again this is in English and then there's other ones like this but this was in Japanese this one here you know and it has a lot of colorful pictures and looks really nice and but this looks more like for people who are traveling maybe on car or have you know they're not riding a bicycle and then there was this one here this is in English but this looks more like a glossy magazine that probably sells advertisements or people have to pay to be in here I'm not sure but again it does have different places it looks really nice on the outside but it didn't really give me a good map or good information of going from island to island anyway I went I collected all this information there's tons of information that I got when I returned home I still was kind of lost and when I came back after the first time I made a YouTube video and you can see it here that it was about the 10 things that you might want to know before you go on the Shimanani Kaido especially if you're a beginner or you hadn't done it before because I made so many mistakes the blue line turns right so I gotta go that way okay that's a little bit tricky it kind of turns at this um, intersection let's hope this is right you can probably see the, the blue arrow I'm gonna cross and cross again there wasn't enough information I didn't plan I didn't prepare enough that was my own fault but again there wasn't like a good map or something that I thought would really be helpful for me looks like I've only gone like five kilometers and it's still 71 to Imabari so it's like 76 kilometers to Imabari holy shit and so here was the cut off this intersection you have to go right and I and you have to pay attention and the blue line continues here so you got to really be careful so when I came back from the trip this was in my mailbox and it takes about I think it was about one to two weeks so it's not immediately even though it's on Amazon so you have to plan for that and it did say something about it's a, a Japanese NGO so if you don't live in Japan I don't know how long it'll take so if you are planning to ride the Shimanami Kaido and you want to get this you better order early and if you're interested I have a link in the description down below so it comes in a, a sleeve like an envelope like this there's seven maps each one look very similar you know you can see they, they look like this each one is about a different island this one is about Imabari this one is about Kamijimacho and they, the, the layout is pretty much the same so here they have a map of the area and each one again is written in very clear and native English speaker English so it's very clear and concise and they also talk about different things to you know that to be aware of small little things 
This is really, really well done. Very, very detailed. And this is the kind of information you need when you're walking or you are riding your bike. And so on this side, they have like the food. They have what's famous in my body, it's towels. And I guess you can visit the towel factory. I didn't know that. Places to stay. So I don't think this is built on advertising or if, you're, if they put you in here, you, you have to pay. I think this is done by the NGO. So it's, it's very neutral and well done. And on each one of the maps, every map has this. And this is the most important. This is the ferry and bus services here. But really what I wanted to know was more about the ferries. So you can see here is that I had highlighted and I had written because there's three different ferry companies. It's very confusing. And if you check online about the ferry system, the times, it's just confusing because, you know, there's different ferries from Onomichi coming out and ferries from Imabari. And some are run by the company. Some are run by the city. Some are ferries. Some are larger boats like ships. We don't know. There's nowhere to find that information. So there were three different ferry companies. Well, one was the city and the other two were companies, which I found out later, different name, but same owner. And then I called each one to double check about the time. I think this was printed in January of 2022. So it's a little over a year old, but still very, very up-to-date information. For whether it's COVID or for whatever reason, times have changed. There are some ferries that they have cut from the list. So there's none in the af mid-afternoon, one in the morning, one later in the evening. So you have to know this. So I called each one to verify because I was thinking about having like riding the bicycle out to a certain point and taking the ferry back or taking the ferry out early and then riding back. So you know that you want to have different options. At the same time, I also wanted to know where the ferry ports were in case like, you know, with me and my three friends, if anyone got hurt or they were extremely tired or it was raining hard, then we could have maybe find a ferry port that could bring us back. So I was double checking and I found out that the times have changed a little bit. There's also a little, if it's a red mark, like a little diamond next to the time, it means that bicycles cannot be taken on those ferries or ships. So you have to be aware of that. You also have to know like some of these ships, they travel at different speeds. So one might take one hour just to go you know, really close and another might take an hour, but it's going maybe three times the distance. So everything is different. Everything, you know, you have to be aware of. Another problem is, as I said before in the video that I had made after I returned after my first time, very, very few people speak English and there's very little English literature information about the Shimano Mikaido. So if you don't speak Japanese, it's hard to verify. I called and first I asked if there's any English speaker and they said no. So I did it all in Japanese. But then I asked the lady at the end, I said, I would like to make a YouTube video to, to make it easier for people to come and visit and what the easiest way to know more about the ferries. Do you have an English speaker in your office? She said no. So that was the lady who worked for the two companies and I'm assuming the city local government doesn't have anyone else. So basically no one speaks English if you needed information about the ferry. So you either have to have a friend call or some people might, might say oh let's do email well I don't see any email addresses and I don't think they do emails like in America or in Western countries you think about doing email like you know bang 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 and get the information I don't think that that exists don't plan on that. You know, you can try, but don't plan on that. So basically, you got to just be aware that you have to verify and confirm different things because although this is only a little over a year old, times have changed due to COVID or for whatever. And, you know, some some ferries have been cut, so there's no ferry at that time. Remember, this is a very isolated rural area. So for cost, if they don't make money. They lose money in all of these ferry systems, I believe. So what happens is that, of course, eventually, you know, things are going to be changed and cut. So only the local people really no a schedule you know it's hard to keep up but anyway this is vital so again i would use the shimanami toso map i would order it early I would study it. I would plan my itinerary and, and how I'm going to go. Take all the maps with me and use this as the base. And then when you get there, you can get all the information like this or this or the magazines like this that talk about it. Use this as a base first and then fill it in and confirm information with these. After you get there, that's when you can pick these up. So this is one of the maps of Oshima Island. And just to give you an idea of some of the comments and the little hints and tips that they give you, I'm just going to read a couple because just to show you how concise and detailed they are. For example, this one in yellow says, this rough road has steep slopes. There are a lot of dump trucks on the road during weekdays. Here's another one that says, the pavement is old and rough and the slopes are steep on this forest road up to Mount Nebutsuyama. Down here on the, on the right side, it says, up and down mountain road, the sea shines brightly alongside it. Another one here says, comfortable seaside cycling on the flat road. Here's another one that says, don't miss the fork in the road. Take prefectural road 337 to go up north. Another one down south of that. 
I then explore a route, a dynamic forest road off the beaten path. The road is paved the entire way. The path between Shizumi and Igoe is narrow and rough. So this is the kind of detail that this map has. And uh, this is what you want to know. So you know what's in store for you or what you're going to encounter and what to prepare for. And so if you study this map, know where you're going, you're going to have a much better trip, a much more interesting, and you won't worry so much that I don't know where I'm going. It will also help and prevent you from getting lost so often, just like I was without this map in November. I got lost so many times. So I've been doing a lot of pushing on the bike because I didn't know that there were going to be so many hills. There's a huge overpass just to get to tonight's lodging and I didn't know. So if you're interested in getting this, I have a link in the description below. I think this is the best for the initial foundation. So if you haven't been to the Shimanami, you might want to get this. It's 1200 yen, about $10. So that's my suggestion, especially about a good map. And today as I planned the trip, I said, wow, this is the key to any kind of help you need. The rest of the stuff you probably wouldn't even need if you have this and some people might say oh mike i don't want to take all of seven maps it's too heavy i'm riding well just take the maps of the ones of the islands that you're going to visit but again it's not that heavy it's seven of these not too heavy comes in here nice little folder but really after going the one time and getting the information that i collected and looking on the website and checking everything it's really not much at all and very little in english I'm sure there's a lot in Japanese, but I don't read Japanese either, so I, I wasn't able to check that. But for English speakers who need English, I would suggest that this is the best, at least for the base, and then you can make your plan after that. So I hope you have a great trip going to Shimanami. I'm going in April. I was hoping to catch the cherry blossoms, but the cherry blossoms are blooming early this year in 2023. They're already blooming in Tokyo, Kansai here, in Kyoto. It's going to be, I think, next week. Um, down in Shikoku, I think it's going to be a couple of weeks early before I get there at the end of April with my friends but anyway i have a great trip i hope you can come to japan and do the shimanami i'm using an e-bike this time that will save me a lot of problems you saw my earlier video about the 10 things to know before you ride the shimanami that was one of them getting an e-bike instead of a regular bike and i didn't think it was going to be that tough you know and that was my mistake i think you may have, if you've seen the video you know that i thought it was 35 kilometers onomichi to imabari i thought i could do it round trip was 75 it was actually 75 one way and so i got only halfway and then went back the following day and that was the time and I was at Setoda, it was pouring. I learned about the ferries, which I wish I had known before I had gone. And now that I know, that's why I'm using this and the ferry system to figure out. I want backup in case I can't make it back or you know I'm too tired. That way, you know that you can get back another way. Or if you're gonna go out quickly, you can go out on the ferry and then ride back. You know, there's several options, but keep your options open. This map with the different ferry times and everything really, really help. Just be sure to confirm and verify all the times because some of the times have changed and they're infrequent. So you always gotta be ready because if you miss the ferry, there might not be another one until the next day or maybe five or six hours later and you can't wait there's many things to be aware of and that's the challenge of rural japan in shikoku i love shikoku i love rural japan it's just that it's not convenient and especially out there when there's so many islands and so many different businesses and you know they, they try to run it as an association but it's still run pretty much independently everyone's kind of independent you got to really be aware to make sure that you connect the dots japan has the best service in all of the world their attention to detail they're able to omotenashi anticipate guest needs except out in rural japan 